Hey, what's going on YouTube? This is CJ. Welcome back to another episode of the Innovative Marine 75 EXT Reef Build, also known as the Be Easy Reef. Now, if you stumbled across this channel per YouTube recommendations or you're new here and just didn't know about it, this is a full build playlist and we cover everything from the install of the tank to all the trials and tribulations in between. And it's an ongoing series, guys. So I recommend go back, scroll the playlist for any title that jumps to you and catch up on everything that's been going on. So in this update, we are going to focus on the livestock and some of the things I've noticed over the last year or so with stock in the tank losses and everything in between. This has been a well requested video and definitely overdue. So let's go ahead and get to it. Now, when it came to stocking this tank, I tried something I've never done before. And that is starting off with a quarantine slash observation system back when we first started this build now i don't have this system running anymore but as you guys can see we definitely put the first new additions through a three to four week observation period treat it with prosy pro as needed and any other issues that i noticed i was able to try to address them while these fish were in the observation tank now this is not something that i'm telling you you have to do i'm just kind of sharing my experience with doing this and honestly i didn't lose a fish guys uh, all fish made it through the observation period I didn't over medicate or medicate for no reason, copper, any of that stuff right away. And then every other addition, we're going to try to manage any parasites, pests, you know, any fish wipeout events with a UV sterilizer. So I don't speak about this a lot, but it has been on the system for almost a year or so at this point. And it's going to be the Pentair 25 watt UV. Have this thing plumbed in to the return manifold. And it actually just stays on the tank so this is something that's kind of a silent operator on the system but definitely feel like it's had a great impact so when it came to stocking the tank i kind of set four basic requirements for myself the first and most important the max size of the fish guys this is only a 75 gallon three by two by two tank so i didn't need any 15 inch monster swimming around so the biggest fish in here will be the convict tank once he grows out and the second thing I did was make sure I only purchased juvenile fish. I didn't want to add an adult fish into a system with smaller babies. You know, try to prevent any bullying or any of those things, doing that that way. And then, of course, you know, habitat, making sure I had the type of fish that, you know, needed sand. For example, some of the rasses I have. And then, of course, compatibility. And now that one was based off my experience with keeping these fish over the years. So I had a good idea of what I could keep together. But of course, there were some outliers that I had to try just to find out myself. Let's go ahead and dive into the stock list of the Be Easy Reef. Try my best to get some, you know, semi good shots with the camera. Of course, it doesn't always cooperate, but starting off is going to be my pair of snowflake clownfish. I had these guys as small babies. Now, they bickered and fought for about four or five months, but they are now an official pair and they hang tight inside the anemone. Now, of course, we had to have some kind of herbivore or cleanup crew type fish. And considering the small size of my tank, I was limited to the type of tangs I could get. So we went with the bristle tooth tang, a tamini tang to take care of some of the algae issues. And then we also picked up a convict tang. Now, this is the second one. I was one for one. The first one arrived DOA from Live Aquaria. Grabbed this guy locally from my LFS. And I, from what I heard, convict tangs are kind of hard to keep. But this guy's been, you know, doing his thing and growing steadily over the last year. Of course, the Flame Angel. This is one of those fish that is just so beautiful. You got to risk it. And I've been lucky so far. This guy has not been a cool nipper. He's been a model citizen. But he is the third attempt. Of course, you know, the first two just didn't make it. I never had issues keeping Flame Angels before. But for some reason, the first two I purchased just would not eat. So thinking maybe collection issues may have been the cause and then of course our second attempt at a copper band butterfly fish purely for aptasia control and adding a little splash of you know variety as far as how the tank looks this guy has been alive for the last two weeks or so still hasn't been eating prepared food but he has not been losing weight i'm guessing he's surviving off picking off microfauna or whatever else he's eating in the tank so keep our fingers crossed if this guy will make it. So let's introduce the first member of the Ras gang, uh, Leopard Ras. These are historically, you know, difficult to keep from what I've heard. But this guy survived quarantine during the early days of the Be Easy Reef. And he's still alive and well. 
getting everything in the tank. And then of course, this is gonna be the yellow chorus rise. Now, this is another staple for me. I'm pretty sure I've had one of these guys in every one of my systems. Great for pest control, guys. Pretty much every one of these rises are in the tank because I love their aggressive swimming style, how they're always hunting around the rock. And then a dusky rask is also gonna fit in that equation. Never had one of these before, but I love the idea of having a black fish and the white tail and the little spot on top definitely is something that is kind of appealing to me. So I'm glad I added this guy. He's also an original quarantine member. And then of course, my favorite rise of all is gonna be the radiant rise. Now this is a fish that's kind of hard to get. It's more of a seasonal fish, but I was glad to finally get my hands on one. I had to wait about seven months or so, but he is also in the Be Easy Reef. Now, when it comes to smaller mouth fish that kind of can focus on red bugs or any other smaller pests in your aquariums, gotta grab you a six line ras. Don't really see this guy swim around too much as far as open water, but he definitely hunts around the rock and definitely is a very, very busy fish. Now, we're gonna keep it rolling changing the pace with an azure damsel fun fact i had three of these guys in here at first but this one had the other two pinned to the walls of the tank so i rescued those guys removed them traded them in and he's kind of been a silent you know innocent fish only on his own he's the small guy in the tank now this fish here is something that i added as kind of a i guess i don't know a fish with no purpose but just pretty cool all he does is kind of perch and look at you and you know dive bomb and attack a few fish here and there but for the most part he's been a model citizen and this guy is going to be the last addition i made that honestly probably was a mistake but it's such a beautiful fish and he ended up costing around six fatalities in the tank that's right six different murders in the be easy reef guys splendid dotty backs beautiful and dangerous and this is going to be the only one left of the blue chromis shout out to the dotty back for completely murdering five of his buddies in the tank so not sure how long this guy's gonna make it but he is the remaining of the chromis gang now a lot of people may be wondering if i had inverts in the system definitely do uh, we actually have four shrimp in the tank these guys have been in here since day one uh, this is gonna be my cleaner shrimp pair they set up their cleaner stations all the fish kind of stop by and give them a visit well by all of them anything else besides the rasses and then you got the fire shrimp which kind of hides and lives underneath the skate he only pops out whenever i drop food in the tank and he's you know he's grown a lot out of him he was tiny multi multiple times definitely has been doing his thing then of course we got the coral bandit shrimp this guy was a trade into the lfs he was a bandit i guess gangster in the tank he came from so i figured let's go ahead and add him to the be easy reef and so far he's been doing pretty good he hasn't killed anything and all four shrimp I've been kind of living together and doing the things, guys. So that's kind of give you a quick rundown on all of the livestock and the Beezy Reef. You know, minus the hermits and snails and all of that, because those guys are all over the tank. But that covers all the fish and the inverts. Now, I know we ran through that pretty quickly. So if you lost count or lost track, have it conveniently listed on the screen for you. Stock list is currently 16 fish alive and well in the Beezy Reef. And at the high point, guys, we had around 22, 23 fish swimming in the system, completely full and just looked awesome with all that movement in life. And unfortunately, you know, we added the dotty back and that guy went crazy, ended up murdering five chromas, also killed the red line rice and the green coarse rice through the bullying. Those guys just buried themselves until they just starved to death. It's just one of those situations to where once he was in the tank, I just kind of was going to let it play itself out. And unfortunately, it didn't go the way we wanted it to go. And now some of those fish I ended up having to evict, like the, the uh, Blennies, the Lawnmower Blenny, and the Molly Miller both developed an appetite for corals, unfortunately. So we had to get those guys out of the tank. And then some of the other fish that died ended up perishing for unknown reasons. My assumption, maybe collection issues. Uh, a lot of those times, those fish just died on their own. And it didn't lead to any kind of crazy spike in the tank you know velvet ick outbreak or any of those things that will wipe out your own system so we are lucky this is probably one of the first systems i've had that i haven't had some kind of mass wipeout event and i'm going to attribute that to some of the extra steps i took with the observation tank at the beginning stages and running a well-sized uv sterilizer guys so 
I mean, I know a lot of people have questions and, you know, concerns as far as UV sterilizers. For me, I feel like the benefits for fish health definitely worked in my case. Um, or I just got extremely lucky and I'm just giving the UV the credit. We'll see. <laughs> but honestly, at this point, I just want to get an update out there so people knew what was in the BE's reef. And if you're interested in keeping this many wrasses, my suggestion would be adding some of the more aggressive brasses last and if you want to keep inverts with rasses add the inverts first to your tank and add the rasses last i found that letting all these fish kind of grow up together has led to more success than you know most people may experience in their tanks and definitely not adding things to the system that are full grown or adults while you're trying to grow out juveniles is also something i would say will attribute it to your success so for me this is kind of where we are now what's going to be the new fish added later honestly i don't know guys i really don't have too much of a need or want as much as i miss having a you know, really busy tank with 20 plus fish 16 fish that actually are growing and healthy and you know somewhat getting along i think at this point is enough to call it a success and we'll just kind of leave it at that so hopefully you guys you know enjoyed this video and learn a little more as far as what's in the be easy reef and how i kind of went through my process of stocking this tank and as always if you guys want more content slide by my instagram cj's aquariums i'm on there daily posting things and then other than that hey you guys can like comment subscribe you guys keep doing what y'all do y'all be easy and happy reefing peace